Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Volume of Rectangular Solids. This is part one. In a nutshell, what we want to do is be able to understand what the volume means uh, when we calculate the volume of a cube or what we call a rectangular solid. So let's just start by taking a look at this. This is a cube, which means we have all of the different dimensions are all the same. And if you just want to compare that really quickly with the next problem, this is more generally called a rectangular solid. You can see why, because it's a rectangular shape on one face, and then in the other dimension it can have some other length. In other words, all the dimensions are not the same, whereas for a cube, all of the dimensions are exactly the same. So what I want to do is first show you the equation to calculate the volume, and then we're going to calculate it and we'll talk about exactly what it means and what the units mean, because it's important for you to understand how volume is different than area and why the units are different also. So that's also part of what we want to do today. So first, let's just get to the nuts and bolts of the equation for the volume. The volume of any of these rectangular solids like this, meaning a cube or a rectangular thing that's been stretched out, is the length of the thing times the width of the thing times the height of the thing. Now this might look familiar because remember the area, the surface area of a rectangle is just its length times its width. So if we were just trying to find the area of this square, forget, forget about the fact that it's a cube, just the square here, we would just multiply length times width, three times three, right? But because it has another dimension to it in the, into the board like that, also of a, of a length of three, then to find the volume of the thing, it's three times three, but times the other three. So length times width times height. Now before we actually calculate it, let's spend a minute to take a look. If we were to slice this thing up, remember what the area is, is trying to draw little squares onto the surface to figure out how many squares fit in there. That's why the unit of area is square millimeters, square kilometers, square inches, things like that. But the volume, you, you have an object in three-dimensional space like this cube here. So we don't want to know how much the surface area is. We want to know how big the thing is in, in three-dimensional space. So if you see, if you look closely, this thing has a bunch of little cubes that are kind of cut into the surface. And if I turn it on its side, you can see that you could, if you wanted to, you could count these cubes all the way through. Not just on the surface, but you could count the cubes on the inside all the way through. And so the volume of an object is trying to figure out how many of these little cubes fit inside. Just like for surface area, it's how many of those squares fit inside. So the units were square millimeters, square inches, square yards, square meters. But here we have a three-dimensional shape that takes up volume. So we want to figure out how many cubes occupy that volume. So the units will be cubic inches, cubic centimeters, cubic kilometers, cubic light years, cubic yards, and so on. So the uh, big picture here, when you're measuring just regular old distance, the units are length, like meters, kilometers, centimeters. When we're talking about area, we're drawing little squares and counting them. Square millimeters, square centimeters, square yards. When we're trying to find the volume, we want to see how much space it occupies, we count cubes. So the units are cubic inches, cubic millimeters, cubic centimeters, and so on. And so, to then find the volume of this object, we just said length times width times height, it will be in this case, they're all three. So three times three times three. And so the first three times three gives you nine. Still have to multiply by that last three. Nine times three is 27. Now what units are we going to have? See, for surface area, forget about this, it was just centimeters times centimeters. That's why we came up with the idea of a square centimeter. But here, it's centimeters times centimeters times centimeters, which means we actually have something called a cubic centimeter, which you write centimeters cubed. So the answer is 27, and we can say it out loud as cubic centimeters, that's what this means, or we could say centimeters cubed. Usually we write it like this in science. And the reason we have that little three up there at the top is just reminding you that it's volume because it was one dimension of length and one dimension of width and one dimension of height and they were all multiplied together. So what we are having to deal with there is a unit of centimeters times centimeters times centimeters, which means centimeters cubed. And so just to drill it home a little bit more, what we are really doing is we're trying to figure out how many, not squares, how many cubes will fit in there where each of these little cubes in there has uh, a one dimension of, of one centimeter and then the other dimension of another centimeter, this dimension right here, and then the depth dimension, which is a little hard to draw on the board, another centimeter. So when we say cubic centimeters, we literally are saying make a cube 
where each of the distances of that cube are just one centimeter. We call it a cubic centimeter. How many of these cubic centimeters can fit in there? That's what we're doing. And we're saying that 27 of these cubic centimeters can fit in there. So let's try to squeeze as much understanding as we can out of this by, by doing a little bit more. We know that if this is three, and if this is three, then I could, if I were just trying to find the surface area, I could draw a little grid on top of here. And it's not gonna be perfect because I'm not you know, an artist. And also my drawing is not totally perfect either. But I could, if I were just interested in the surface area, forget about all of this. I could, since I know it's three centimeters, this would be one centimeter, one centimeter, one centimeter, one centimeter, one centimeter, one centimeter. And we know that the area of the face here is three times three is nine square centimeters. You can count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine square centimeters fit on the face of this thing. That would be like counting the squares just on the face of this right here, right? But we're not interested for volume of just knowing how big the surface is. We wanna know how big the entire space is. So then if we know that there's nine of these squares on the surface, and then we can see that if we kind of go back here like this, and we can, oh man, it's gonna be a little hard. I'll draw it like this, I guess. If you could see, if you could cut it, because you know it's three centimeters in that direction also, one, two, three, then you could see that there's basically gonna be nine squares in this surface layer, and then there's gonna be nine more squares in the middle layer going through, and then there's gonna be nine more squares in the last layer on the back end. So it's nine and nine and nine, that's nine times three. That's 27. That's why there's 27 cubes, because there's nine of them in the first layer, and then nine more in the second layer, and then nine more in that third layer. So if we were counting cubic centimeters, we would get an answer of 27 cubic centimeters. Same thing I was saying down here. We just figure out how many of these are in here and we count them. For a rectangular solid like that, it's always length times width times height, always. And that is what we have to remember. So now that we've done the talking, we can calculate much more easily this. We're gonna find the volume of this thing. And it's length times the width times the height, always for rectangular solids. The length is four. And these numbers don't really matter which place you put them because you're just multiplying them. They're all gonna be, give you the same answer no matter the order in which you multiply. So four goes here, two, let's say there, and uh, or I guess two is really the height and the depth is really, it doesn't really, I could say, matter what number you put where because you're multiplying them anyway. So four times two times one is the same as two times four times one, for instance. So you have eight times one, which is still a volume of eight. And it is meters times meters times meters, which means cubic meters. So the answer is eight cubic meters. And what this means is if I actually built a cube of these dimensions, then if I took a little cube that was one meter on each side, also called a cubic meter, and try to see how many of these would fit in there, then eight of them would fit in there. Because on the surface layer here, well actually it's only one meter deep, you can see that there would be two times four, there would be eight squares here, and the depth is only one, so there's only eight of these cubic meters that will fit any, in, the, in that space, All right? Half of the battle is understanding why the unit of volume has a three there. It's just because you have the third dimension and it's telling us that you know meters times meters times meters, cubic meters. That's what the meters cube means. How many of those will fit in there? What is the volume of this guy? It is length times width times height, right? Again, it doesn't matter what number you put in what position because it's all gonna be the same anyway. So I'm not gonna stress out about which one is which. One of them has to be a four. The other one has to be the three, and the other one has to be the 10. We're multiplying them all anyway. Four times three is 12. We still have to multiply by 10. And 12 times 10, you just add a zero and make it 120. 120 what? Well, it's inches times inches times inches, which means it's cubic inches. That's how many cubic inches will fit inside of here. 120 cubic inches. I do have a couple of more. I'm gonna take these down and conquer those right now. All right, the next problem, we have this rectangular solid. We have one dimension of six millimeters. The height here is two millimeters. The depth here is seven millimeters. The volume is always the same. It's the length times the width times the height or length, width, depth, however you wanna uh, talk about it. The length of this thing, and you could call each dimension, you know, which one's length, which one's width. I mean, it doesn't really matter. The length I'm gonna say is six, uh, even though really most people would call that the width. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't really matter, right? 
Uh, two for the other dimension, even though most people would call that height, I'll just put it there, it doesn't really matter. And then seven for the depth. All right, so uh, most people would probably call this length, this would be width, this would be height, so, so the numbers would be rearranged, but the answer will be the same. So six times two is 12, still gonna multiply by seven, and 12 times seven from multiplication tables is 84. And you can multiply that out by hand if you needed to. 84 what? Millimeters times millimeters times millimeters means that the answer is 84 cubic millimeters or also called millimeters cubed there. All right, 84. All right, now here is our very last problem. We have more of a skyscraper shape here. The volume is still a rectangular prism, so we have a rectangular solid. Length times width times height, right? Uh, we could say that the length is three, the width is two, and the height is five. Again, I don't care where you put the numbers because you're just gonna have to multiply them all together anyway. The volume, three times two is six, still have to multiply by five, six times five is 30, and the units are kilometers times kilometers times kilometers, which means kilometers cubed. And there's 30 of them, 30 cubic kilometers or 30 kilometers cubed. So what this means is if I actually built a skyscraper with, where the width of it was this uh, much and the depth was this much and the height was this much, then I would be able to fit 30 of these little cubes inside where each cube had a side in all directions of one kilometer, 30 of them, that's what would fit. So there's really two goals here. One, I want you to know how to calculate the volume. But two, I want you to understand why the units or volume are cubic right? Cubic centimeters, cubic millimeters, and why the area, the, the units of surface area are square units. It's just because when we're trying to figure out how much surface area something has, we just count squares. And the units are inches times inches, so square inches. How many of these squares have one inch on each side? We call them square inches. But with volume, we have that other dimension. We're not counting squares, we're counting cubes. And so each cube has to have a dimension of one centimeter, one centimeter, one centimeter, for instance, multiply them all together, we get cubic centimeters. So we're counting cubes. That's the difference. Volume is how much space something occupies. Area is just how much surface it has. How much would it take to paint something, for instance? So I'd like you to finish, uh, solve these yourself, make sure you get all the correct answers. And then we're going to follow me on to the next lesson. We have a part two. The problems are maybe a little larger numbers, maybe some fractions involved, but ultimately, the concept is the same. We're gonna be calculating volume in the next lesson as well.